Hey guys, um, I'm just going to make a quick video for you to help you review. Um, these were the questions that were requested, number 24, 26, 28, 29, 31, 33, and 34. So I'm just going to go through those quickly. Um, if you don't need certain ones, you can just skip around in the video, but hopefully you guys will find this helpful. So um, here's number 24. When I look at this, I say I have e to the stuff, right, or e raised to another function. So if I'm going to take the derivative, my derivative for e, so e to the x is going to be e to the x. So my derivative, I have e to the stuff, is going to be e to the stuff. Whenever I have stuff, I have to multiply by the derivative of stuff. Okay. Now, um, you could leave your answer like this, but if you wanted to rewrite it, it's a little bit more common to see it looking like this. Okay, number 26. Um, we could FOIL this out, but that doesn't help us. Um, this is a polynomial and this is an exponential function. So because they're two different types of functions, the easiest thing to do is just use the product rule. Specifically, I have this piece here multiplied by this piece here. So if I use my product rule, I'm going to have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, remember, the derivative of the first, I'm going to have e to the stuff. So I need to multiply by the derivative of stuff. Okay? Um, if this were the test and it were for your response, you could leave it just like that. If you wanted to clean it up a little bit, I would probably write it like this. Oh, actually, probably would have put that in the front, but that's okay. Um, you can leave it like that. I'm actually even thinking you might want to pull out the e to the x squared. Like if this were a multiple choice, you might see something like this. So I'm going to pull out that e to the x squared. When I do that, I have a 4x cubed. Then this is going to be a 2x to the fifth minus 10x. So you also might see something looking like that. This is obviously not um, in standard form, but that would be fine. But quite frankly, if I were you, I'd probably just leave it like, like this. Okay. Remember, when it's free response, once you get to an algebraically correct answer like this, you can leave it. And the, like if it was a multiple choice question, you're probably going to have to match it to a simplified form. Okay, let's look at number 28. I have an exponential, but my base is 2. So my derivative is going to be... 2 to the stuff times ln of the base, which is 2. Okay, so that's the derivative, but I have 2 to the stuff, so I need to multiply by the derivative of stuff. Okay, and you can leave your answer just like that. Okay, and I just want to grab one thing real fast before I keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, number 29. Find the equation of the line tangent to the function that at the point negative 2, 1, your answer should be in slope intercept form. Okay, so if I'm going to write the equation, I should be thinking this. So I need um, a, a point. And I need a slope. Well, I have a point. They already gave it to me. I need a slope, and we, we find the slope using the derivative at a point. So the first thing I'm going to do, so here's my function. The first thing I'm going to do is take the derivative of that function. This is already written in a power rule form. It's a power rule with a chain rule, but that's easy to take the derivative of. So I'm going to take my 2 thirds. It's going to go down to the front. I subtract 1. I need to multiply by the derivative of the stuff. Well, the derivative of this is just 1, so I can put times 1, but I really don't have to. I'm going to rewrite this in a form that's a little bit easier for me to comprehend. So that 2 is going to stay in the numerator, that 3 is going to go in the denominator, and then this is a negative exponent, so it goes in the denominator, and the 1 third tells you to take the cube root. Well, this is the derivative rule. We need to figure out the derivative or the slope at a point. Specifically, we want to know what the slope is at x equals negative 2. So we're going to have a negative 2 plus 1. 
Well, that's the same as 2 over 3 times the cube root of negative 1. Well, the cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1, so this is going to be a negative 2 thirds. So now I can do my equation. It's y minus y1. So, oopsies. So y minus my y coordinate equals my slope times x minus the x coordinate. So there's number 29 for you. Okay. If you need to pause it for a minute, you can. I'm going to flip over to the back and do um, 31, 33, and 34. Okay, so H and G are inverses, and G of X equals all that. G of 1 is negative 3, then find H prime of negative 3. Well, the key thing here is that H and G are inverses, because if they're inverses, we have a formula that tells me the derivative of 1 is 1 over the derivative of the other, and then inside of that, well, rather than saying it out, I'll just show you in a second. But um, one other thing you have to remember, if I have inverses, that means for the original function, or the original functions, my input and my output switch, okay? And we'll get back to that in a minute. So if I want h prime of three, okay, and g and h are inverses, then my formula is gonna be one over, I'm gonna do, instead of h, I'm gonna do g prime, the letter here should match the letter on the inside of three. So first thing I need is h of three. Well, notice they didn't, oh, is there a, t oh, Oh, no, we're good. That's negative 3. That's why I got confused. Okay, well, we don't have anything but h of negative 3, but we said for the original functions, the input and the output switch. So notice if g of 1 is equal to negative 3, and for, for inverses, inputs and outputs switch, that means that h of negative 3 should give me a value of 1. So that I 1 over g prime of 1... Well, I need to figure out what g prime of 1 is. Well, fortunately for me, they gave me what g was. g prime of x real fast. That's going to be 6x squared minus 4. Well, we need to know what that is at 1. So g prime of 1 is going to be 6 minus 4. So that's going to give me a value of 2. So that's going to give me a value of 1 over 2. Okay, so make sure you know this formula. And make sure you know that for inverse functions, inputs and outputs switch. Okay, we didn't get a request for number 32. I know in third period I talked about this a little bit. Make sure in class you guys ask me about this one. But I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Um, let's look at number 33. It says functions f and g are defined by these two functions, what's the approximate value of x for which their derivatives are equal on a given interval? So I'm just going to clear my calculator really fast because it was used today for the PSAT. One thing I recommend is if you are ever having um, calculator troubles on a quiz or a test, always start by just resetting or clearing the memory. The way you do that is you go to second. I'll just go through it. Okay. So second, mem, so the memory is down here on the plus sign. You're going to go to reset. Depending on the calculator you have, reset will be 5 or 7 normally. The big thing is, so RAM is like kind of like your computer's current memory. All's going to reset all the settings. I think RAM might too. I can't remember off the top of my head. But all's a safer bet. If you have computer games, though, or like fun calculator games, those will clear as well. And then I just reset it. It's going to reset all my memory. It's kind of going to like think of it as putting it back in factory settings. Um, but it means your mode will be in radians, so if you have to change that, just heads up. But normally in calculus, we're dealing in radians. Okay, so here's my two functions. If I want the approximate value for which they're equal, I'm going to look for where they intersect. So I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to just start by typing in my function. So I have a 2 to the x plus 1, okay, and then I have tangent of x over 2. Now, we don't want to graph the functions, we want to graph their derivatives. So notice I'm going to go down now to y3, or you can do some y4, it doesn't matter, sometimes I like to give it some space. I'm doing y4. Um, I'm going to go to math. I'm doing the derivative, so it's math 8, but if you want to scroll down, you can see that's what it looks like, n derivative. 
If you have a TI-83, it's a little different. If you have questions, you can ask me about it next class. But if you're using an 84, it's going to be D over DX. That's almost always the same. What function am I taking the derivative of? Well, I'm going to do Y1 first. So if I go to VARS, Y VARS, enter on function, and Y1. When I'm graphing, I'm not trying to evaluate my derivative just at a single X value. I want to evaluate all of the X values. So I'll actually get a graph. So that needs to be X equals X. Now in Y5, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do math 8x, but now I'm going to do Y2 because I want to figure out what the derivative of Y2 is. Again, we're going to do it. We want to evaluate all x values, not just a single point. Now when I graph this, I just want to graph the derivatives. And you can see how it's bolded around the equal sign. That's what tells me it's going to graph. I don't want to graph either of these original functions. So I just go over the equal sign and push Enter. And when I scroll away, you'll notice that they're no longer bold. Now, these take a while to graph, so I like to update my window before I graph. Notice my x values are between negative 2 and 2, so I'm going to go to my window. My x min is going to be negative 2. My x max is going to be 2. And I can leave my y's just the way they are. We can adjust those if my screen's too big or too small afterwards. So remember, on my window here, my x values should match. And then I can graph. So your calculator is doing a lot of work to do this, so that's why sometimes it can be a little slow. Here's my first derivative coming up. Here comes my second one. Okay. I can already tell my intersection point's going to be right around here. In order to do an intersect, I'm going to go to second, calc, intersect. Okay. I'm going to scroll over. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. <laughs> I'm going to push enter three times. It's, it's, if you have multiple curves, they want to know which two you want. So I'm saying I want my, my y4. I already did. I'm going to push enter on y5. And now I'm saying this is my guess. It's going to be roughly around here. So after my third enter, it's going to calculate it for me. They're asking, what is the approximate value of x? So my answer is going to be this first number. And you'll notice that's my answer choice b. Let's do number 34. Okay, it says consider the function for which f prime of one equals negative three. The value of a is what? Um, you can do this using your calculator. You can also do this one by hand. I'm gonna do it by hand real fast. Not every calculator problem you have to use a calculator for. I'm gonna start by rewriting this really fast. I'm gonna divide x into this and I'm gonna get an x. This is just going to be an a over x, which is the same as a x to the negative 1. If I take the derivative of this, this is going to turn into 1 minus a x to the negative 2, or in other ones, 1 minus a over x squared. Well, they're asking me when f of 1 is negative 3. So I want to know when, when f prime of 1 so that means I'm going to plug in 1 everywhere I see an x. When does this equal negative 3? So I have 1 minus, that's just a, equals negative 3. I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides, and I get a equals 4. That's one way to do this problem, but that's not how we did it before. We said we want to know when the derivative of this, when I plug in 1, is negative 3. So another option is to say, okay, I'm going to do math 8 because that's what lets me evaluate my derivative at a point. I'm not graphing it everywhere. I just want to know what's happening at 1. We're taking the derivative with respect to x, so that goes here. We're going to test different a values. So if we're using our calculator, we could say, okay, I want to know when x squared plus, let's try 2 first, over x. I want to know what the derivative is when I plug in 1. So x equals 1 because of this where my thumb is. Well, notice when I evaluate my calculator saying the derivative equals negative 3. Well, that's not what this says. So we can try it again. The easiest thing to do is do second entry. That's going to copy exactly what you typed before. Again, second entry, you're going to do the second button right here. And then above enter is entry. 
but I don't want to do two anymore. I want to see what happens when I turn that A into a three. So I'm going to turn that A, oopsies, into a three. Oops, that doesn't match this. I'm going to do it again, second entry. I'm going to change that to a four. Enter. Ah, negative three. Now, I know that your calculator has this extra stuff. Sometimes when your calculator is calculating derivatives, um, it's doing so much work that sometimes it has to do some like little, not like guesswork, but approximating in the process, and sometimes that's what causes this. But you'll notice if you test all these, this is by far the best answer. Um, so the answer would be four, because when I took the derivative with a being four at one, I got negative three, okay? So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I'll see you for your quiz um, tomorrow, and I hope you have a good afternoon.